Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the Loot and Lore edition of Wailing Caverns. I first want to give a shout out to all of you that watched my Ragefire Chasm quest guide. I appreciate all the feedback, and I'm more motivated than ever to bring you this special edition of the Wailing Caverns. Now, this guide took a while to make as I am focusing first on not only quest pickups, but also I'm going to be doing some quest pairings. This is meant to be a visual guide. This is for all of you visual and auditory learners out there that prefer to see the steps in action rather than simply reading about it. So as I said, there are going to be some quest pairings. You can find some quests in the crossroad so that you can do along with the Wailing Caverns quests. Now there are seven of these in total. Two of them are quest chains and two of them are horde only. The two that are horde only are the leaders of the Fang quest chain and Serpent Bloom. Now these offer two blue items so the horde kind of wins out in this case. However, Alliance players don't fret. Five of these are neutral quests, meaning that Alliance can also do five of these quests. If you wanted to take a group out here, it is definitely feasible. You can run through either Duskwallow Marsh or through Ashenvale. I've done it before on a few different Alliance tunes. It's a lot of fun. Definitely try it out if you can. So this was a blast to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and hang in tight. It's a longer episode as there's a lot of steps involved. So here we go. Our journey begins in Thunder Bluff. In order to get Leaders of the Fang, we first need to complete a four-part Oasis quest series. This means we need to run to Hamul Rune Totem in Thunder Bluff on the Elder Rise. We will pick up a quest titled the Baron Oasis. So the Druids of Thunder Bluff sense a strange power leaking into the Barrens east of Mulgore. He sent someone named Tonga Rune Totem to discover the source of this power, but he's afraid that he needs some help. So you need to travel to the Barrens at the crossroads. He gives you some directions on how to get there, but if you've already followed my first guide, you've already run through both the Barrens and Thunder Bluff. So you can simply fly there if you have the flight path or have to run following the road. Now, at the crossroads, there's a few quests that you can chain together in order to get a lot of XP while you're leveling up in order to get the level requirement for the Wailing Caverns. The Forgotten Pools is the Wailing Caverns quest. If you're only interested in the Wailing Caverns quest, then just do that one. So you'll first pick up Fungal Spores from Apothecary Hellbrim. Move over to Gazrog and pick up Raptor Thieves, and then run to this small little teepee here and talk to Tonga Rune Totem. You can then pick up the Forgotten Pools, which is part of the Wailing Caverns quest chain. Move on to Sergra and pick up Planestrider Menace. So the Wailing Caverns quest, this is the Forgotten Pools. So this is the second part of the Baron's Oasis series. He mentions that the Barrens used to be a lush place teeming with life, a big jungle as you see from the Oasis. However, things have changed. New Oasis have formed and life stirs. He wants you to go check out the Forgotten Pools and explore the bottom to see if there's a source of this power. This is located to the northwest of the crossroads. You must explore the Forgotten Pools. You can collect some fungal spores for XP and kill plane striders on the way. You're going to start heading northwest of the crossroads. If you have the plane strider quest, make sure you kill some on the way and loot their beaks. As you can see I'm a lower level here. I'm not ready for the Wailing Caverns, but I can still do the prereq quests and some other ones on the way. You can pick up the laden mushrooms here, they're just a collection quest, pretty easy as long as there's not too many people camping it, and then swim to the bottom to that little fissure and then you've officially explored the pools. Finish collecting mushrooms, run back, kill some more plane striders, and then turn in the quest. Now wait to accept the follow up for fungal spores as there's a timer, as you can see I did it here but you can wait if you'd like. Finally turn in the forgotten pools from Tonga Rune Totem and pick up the next quest, the Stagnant Oasis. This is the third part of the Oasis quest series. 
So like the one that you found in the Forgotten Pools, there may be other fissures at the other oases in the Barrens. If so, then perhaps the fissures are the oases' source of life. He wants you to test this, so he gives you some dead seeds. He wants you to take them to the stagnant oasis and plant them within the fissure. See if they grow, see if there's any font of life found beneath the oasis. This is located to the southeast of the crossroads, uh, near Ratchet. So head south of the crossroads and then southeast. Make sure that you kill any Zevra on the way, picking up their hooves. If you've completed the Plain Strider Menace, then you should be able to get this quest. Now we're going to be returning here later, so make sure you remember where this place is. Simply swim to the bottom of the oasis, right click on the fissure, and then you've planted the seeds. Return back, turn in the Stagnant Oasis, pick up Altered Beings, as well as turn in the Zevra if you've got their hooves. So after testing the seeds, Tongaroon Totem then wants you to go back to the Oasis and kill some Oasis Snapjaws and collect their shells. He's interested to see how the magical water is affecting the creatures who drink from it. Now you can kill these Snapjaws at either the Lush Water or the Stagnant Oasis. However, we're going to the Stagnant one in order to get the Raptor Horns from the Raptors found south of the Oasis. Now this step is completely optional, but you can do these quest chains in order to get some more bang for your buck from the Raptors found later. If you turned in the Zevra, you can then pick up the Prowlers of the Barrens and kill these lions located at these locations. I chose to kill them up north as the southern locations seem to be a bit crowded. When you finish the Prowlers of the Barrens, then you can pick up the next quest, Ichiyaki. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but he will give you a horn that you will blow at this location. You'll see a pile of bones. You can just blow the horn, it will spawn the white lion and you can kill it for its hide. The reason why I want you to do these two quests is so that you can get this next one called the Angry Scythe Claws. So, Later on, we're going to be killing raptors for raptor horns. This is a Wailing Caverns prereq. So when you're killing these guys, you'll be able to get raptor heads, sunscale feathers, and intact raptor horns, getting the most bang for your buck killing these mobs. Now, of course, this is completely optional, but any extra XP while doing the prereqs for Wailing Caverns could be very nice. So before we do those quests, we need to go to Ratchet. We can pick up the quest Smart Drinks and Trouble at the Docks. However, in order to do Smart Drinks, you need to first do Raptor Horns. So either run or fly to Ratchet, pick up Raptor Horns from this guy here, and then pick up Trouble for at the Docks. So Mibok Mizzy Rix is a goblin located in Ratchet. He will offer you the quest Raptor Horns. He believes that the raptors of the barons are smarter than any other raptors and that their smarts must be hiding in their horns. Being a very nice goblin, he wants you to collect these horns and turn them into a powder, creating Raptor Punch. He will give you Barkeep's Cloak and Raptor Punch for completing this. However, the Raptor Punch makes you smarter but also decreases your stamina. This didn't go so well, so when you return to him, he says, Ooh, nobody gets rich on their first try, right? I think he found something that'll work even better. Go to the Wailing Caverns and get some Wailing Essence from the ectoplasmic creatures found inside. So he says to hunt down these creatures and gather the essence. Perhaps he can make some smart drinks from this. As you can see, it drops from evolving ectoplasms, nightmare ectoplasms, and whatever other sort of blobby creatures found within. He wants you to gather six Wailing Essence from these guys. They patrol around the entrance and other areas of the dungeon. Kill them and pick up the Essence and bring it back to him. The next quest is Trouble at the Docks. This is from the Crane Operator. He was trying to expedite things from a big shipment from Booty Bay when everything went crazy. He was distracted and he noticed finally that a guy named Mad Maglish ran off with a bottle of 99 year old port. Must be very expensive. Chase him all the way to the Wailing Caverns. So you need to go in there and see if you can find him. First take your left here towards the water area and then take another left. Walk to the end of the corridor and Mad Maglish will be stealthed at the end. Kill him and loot the port. This is technically not within the dungeon itself, but within the caverns before the dungeon. As for your reward, you'll get 10 silver, some rep, and experience. I recommend doing this quest before the dungeon because afterwards people might hearth out and you'll be left on your own to kill this guy. 
Once you've completed picking up the quests in Ratchet, we can then move on to the fourth and final part of the Oasis quest series, being Altered Beings. The stagnant oasis, again, is found to the southeast of the crossroads near Ratchet. We've been here before to test the seeds, so you should know where this place is. So head back here, kill some oasis snapjaws, and when you finish, kill the scythe claws found south of the oasis. You'll be doing killing them in order to get their horns, heads, and feathers. Now, when I got here on my orc, it was packed, so I'm going to be killing them on my troll here. They're found in and around the pool. Beware of their aggro range at low levels. As you can see, I'm pretty low. I'm only level 14. So these guys got onto me. I had to hamstring and run away. Also, something to be aware of is their Sling Dirt ability. This reduces your chance to hit by 40%. So if you have multiple mobs on you and you're constantly missing, this could be a real pain. When you finish, head south and kill some raptors. You're going to be looting their heads, horns, and feathers. Only their horns if you only want to do the Wailing Caverns quest. They're found in these locations, however I'm killing them just south of the oasis near their nests. This seems to be the best spot for me so I can collect feathers for that uh, angry scythe claw quest in order for some extra XP while I'm collecting the horns for Wailing Caverns and the heads for the crossroads quest. All these nests are found within this small little location here. Simply loot the feathers and then right click on the nest in order to complete it. Alright, when you finish killing all of the scythe claws from picking up their horns for the Wailing Caverns quest, you can then move back to the crossroads. Pick up Apothecary Zama from Apothecary Helbrim. This is the follow up to that Fungal Spores quest we did earlier. This is a timed quest sending you to Thunder Bluff. We're going to be going there later for the Wailing Caverns quests, so you might as well get that one for extra XP and some items. And finally, turn in Altered Beings, turn in those shells that you got from the Snap Jaws, which is the final piece of the Oasis quest series. Tonga Rune Totem will then offer you the quest Hamul Rune Totem, sending you back to Thunder Bluff. You will be going there in order to seek counsel from the Elder Druid. He believes that the taint of these shells and of the Oasis is coming from the Wailing Caverns. Go there, talk to him, and then you can finally get the Leaders of the Fang quest. Now, if you haven't done this already, make sure that you turn in the quests in Ratchet. Before going to Thunder Bluff, turn in their Raptor Horns so that you can get the next quest, Smart Drinks. As you can see, I come back here, turn it into Mibok Mizirix. It'll give you the Raptor Punch and the Barkeep's Cloak that I mentioned earlier. Now, since I'm a rogue, I don't really want that raptor punch, so be a nice guy and uh, make sure that you give it to a caster or your healer, whoever can use it. It is tradable, so you can either sell it or give it to your buddy like I did. Next up, we're going to be flying to Thunder Bluff. We want to pick up the quest Serpent Bloom here. We can turn in Apothecary Zama that we got from the crossroads. We can turn in Hamul Rune Totem, and he will give us the next quest, Nara Wildmane, which is just simply talking to a Taranin right next to him. And she will give us Leaders of the Fang, the quest that we've been waiting for. So you're going to first run to the Spirit Rise in order to turn in Apothecary Zama and pick up the quest, Serpent Bloom. Jump down here to the Pools of Vision. Now you can choose to pick up this quest here for Silver Pine if you want. So turn in that quest from the Barons and then also pick up Serpent Bloom for the Wailing Caverns. Now being a member of the Royal Apothecary Society, she is in charge of studying rare flora such as Serpent Bloom in this case. The Royal Apothecary Society is involved in creating plagues for the Forsaken. Why you would want to help her, I'm not really sure, <laughs> but anyway, she wants you to go into the dark recesses of the Wailing Caverns, a dangerous cave system located in the Barrens, and collect some Serpent Bloom for her. This is simply a gathering quest, you don't have to kill any mobs that drop them, you simply pick them up from the ground, meaning anyone in your group can also get them. Collect 10 of these and return to her, she will give you some Apothecary Gloves in exchange for the Serpent Bloom.
So now that we have picked up Serpent Bloom, we can pick up the final quest in Thunder Bluff, running to the Elder Rise. We're going to be turning in Hamul Rune Totem and picking up the next quest, Nara Wild Mane. As I said earlier, this one is very simple. He simply has you speak to somebody right next to him, and then she will give us the Leaders of the Fang quest, which will offer us the juicy wing blade and staff. So here is Nara Wild Mane. We just talked to her and we can then finally pick up Leaders of the Fang. So this quest involves you killing all of the Fang Lords of the Wailing Caverns. You need to kill Pythis, Cobran, Serpentis, and Anacondra. Make sure that you have inventory space because you need to loot these gems from these guys. It's not simply a kill task, it's also a gathering task. In exchange for killing these guys, you will get the Crescent Staff or the Wing Blade. The Crescent Staff being the best in slot two-hander for almost all classes, including Warriors, because look at that juicy DPS. Unless you really want to be tanking with the Wing Blade, but I'd recommend something else with a bit more stamina. So now that we've completed all of the prereq quests, you're going to be running to the Wayland Caverns, picking up the Deviant Hides and Deviant Eradication. Start by heading south from the crossroads and running towards this mountain here. You can see there's a slight incline from this hill. You can run up the side all the way up without having to do any fancy jumping tricks. The Wailing Caverns will be on your left and the crossroads will be on your right. You'll notice at the top of the hill, there's a small Tarn establishment. We're gonna be, gonna be returning here later after you kill Mutinous the Devourer and it's a long quest chain that I'll mention later. Head down the hill towards the Wailing Caverns entrance, you'll see a rocky outcropping, that's how you know you're going the right way. Make sure that you stay to the right here, the right side, and jump down. There is a cavern to the left, don't go there. Go to the right side here, and you'll see the two quest givers found inside. So remember that these quests here in this cave are, att are attainable by both the Horde and Alliance. So the first one, Deviant Eradication. So these guys are disciples of Naralex, a great night elf druid that sought to regrow the barrens back to the lush oasis that it once was. However, something went wrong. Within the Emerald Dream, certain nightmares and corrupt creatures began to spill out and inhabit the caverns. Ebru wants you to kill seven Deviant Ravengers, Vipers, Shamblers, and Dreadfangs found within the dungeon. These are the nightmarish creatures found within the Emerald Nightmare that have spilled into the Wailing Caverns. In exchange for killing these guys, you will get the choice between a Sizzle Stick, Dagmire Gauntlets, or the Deviant Scale Belt. For Alliance players, I'm guessing this belt could sell for a pretty penny due to the uh, inconvenience of running here and completing the quest. Next up is Deviant Hides. So as Narlex descended deeper into the Nightmare, more beasts arose beneath the Barrens into the Wailing Caverns. Now these guys have some very strange and otherworldly properties. However, he believes that some good could come out of this from their hides. Perhaps leatherworking, you can create some interesting items from these otherworldly beings. If you feel up to the task, venture in there and collect the hides from any of the beasts found within. He wants you to collect 20 of these. He'll give you a 10 slot bag as well as some leather leggings which are great for a rogue. And of course, bags are hard to come by when you're at a low level and you don't have a main. As you can see here, they are dropped from pretty much anything that has the word Deviate in their name. It's also dropped from the bosses such as Crash, Scum, Mutinous the Devourer. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem collecting these, even the non-elite crocodiles will drop them here. And finally, for the last quest, which is of course optional, depending on if you can make it to the last boss and kill him without dying or having the Disciple of Narlex die, both the Horde and Alliance can complete this quest. However, in order to spawn the event, you need to kill all of the Fang Lords as well as Verdin the Everliving. Basically kill all of the bosses, which then allows you to spawn Mutinous the Devourer, or at least the gauntlet that leads to killing him. 
In order to do this, you need to run back to the entrance of the Wailing Caverns and talk to the Disciple of Naralex. He will start walking and spawning certain mobs. Make sure that he doesn't die. He walks very slowly and uh, certain raptors will start attacking, druids will respawn. Make sure that he stays alive and you kill all of them. He will finally make it to this room. He'll start walking into here where you will see the sleeping druid Naralex. You will go next to Naralex and start channeling. There will then be a gauntlet. The disciple will attempt to awaken Naralex and packs of mobs will spawn in the water. You need to kill them and ensure that the disciple does not die. If he dies, you'll have to reset the dungeon and try it again. The last mob to spawn is Mutinous the Devourer. He's a big, white, nasty murloc. If you manage to kill him, he will drop this item, the glowing shard. Everyone can pick it up and it will begin a quest. When you read the quest text, it mentions that you need to go to Ratchet. Find someone in Ratchet. Uh, in this case, bring it to uh, Sputter Valve in Ratchet. He is located near the Flight Master. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem finding him. You can either hearth back or uh, fly to Ratchet. Now, in this clip that I showed you earlier, um, Sputter Valve will tell you to find Fala Sagewind. She's located at the top of the mountain near Wailing Caverns. I showed this clip earlier when I was running to the dungeon. Uh, this is simply showing for anyone else who wants to show it slower. Fala Sagewind is located in that spot up top, that Tarn establishment. She'll give you the quest in Nightmares. For Horde, you need to then speak to Hamul Rune Totem in Thunder Bluff. And for Alliance, you need to speak to Mothringal Bearwalker in Darnassus. When you reach either Hamul Rune Totem or the Bearwalker guy in Darnassus, um, he, you have to give him this nightmare shard. He peers into it and, ooh, it does not bode well. He says, thank you for delivering this, but it isn't wise to speak of such things at this time. These are matters you should not concern yourself with, and let's just say things in the Emerald Dream are not going so well. He will offer you the Talbar Mantle or Quagmire Galoshes. Now, the Talbar Mantle is a twink item from what I've uh, heard for level 19. They're very nice shoulders. Uh, there aren't very many shoulders at this level that offer such good stats. They're good for casters and even hunters, so make sure that you get those. Or if you're just a warrior and you want some stamina, you can go for those boots. And that just about does it for all of the quests for the Wailing Caverns. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. It took a long time to make, and please make sure you give me some feedback in the comments as well as whatever posts that you can make. I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, let me know what other dungeons you'd like to see. Also, I'm interested to hear if you liked the idea of my quest chains and quest pairings like I did uh, with the other quests involved in order for you to get more XP. Or if you'd rather just see the quest for the dungeon, I know some of you guys might be higher levels, you've already done some of these quests, so maybe you only want to see the Wailing Caverns quests. Uh, if that's so, just please let me know and for future videos I can uh, keep that in mind. So once again, thanks for watching, make sure you like and subscribe if you liked it, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.